Thank you. Okay, friends, we really do appreciate uh, the opportunity to get to present all this information. We look at our screen, and basically what I want to close with is, is God does hate liars. And the fact of the matter is, friends, there is nobody, if you disagree with them tonight, there's really nothing you can do about it because our community has basically said it's wrong to judge. So you're really stuck with it any way you go. But I'm not of that class. I believe the Bible says in John 7, verse 24, it says that we actually judge righteous judgment. In Psalm, in Psalm 119, 172, we find that all things that God has written are righteousness. So if we find it in, in the Bible, we can actually make judgment. So look at our screen here. Here's what we need to realize. Jesus has a church, and it's not the Baptist church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And friends, the confusion that we're seeing in our area is basically stated in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. We know that. Every city or every house divided against itself shall not stand. It is mockery to try to think that we can undo all of the things that the devil is doing in our area with all this division, all these different kinds of churches. So what we're encouraging you to realize is there is a church in the Bible. It was before the Baptist church. They can call me braggadocious. They can call me names or whatever. But one thing they can't do, and you notice that tonight, is they didn't produce the Baptist church out of God's Word. God never thought of it. He never wrote it. He never intended it. God's mind is right here. 1 Corinthians 2.13, you read of the mind of God. God's Spirit re reveals His mind, and this is His revealed mind, and the Baptist church is not in it. But not only that, the Episcopalian church is not in it, the Methodist church, the Lutheran church, none of them are in it. These are just people coming on the scene, and they're teaching doctrines of devils, and the Bible says their hearts are seared as with a hot iron, and we're simply saying to you, is this enough? Haven't you had enough of this division? What we're hoping is, is that basically from, from reading the Bible, if you look at our screen again, you'll find that the saved people are in the church. The Bible says, praising God and having favor with all the people in the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. You ask yourself, which church is that? It's not the Baptist church. We have been offering for eight years. We've been offering airtime. We've been offering $1,000 for anybody who could produce the Baptist church in the New Testament. And nobody can do that. You know why? Because it's not in the New Testament. It's in the mind of a man. It was made up and it is a counterfeit. And friends, we're saying that it is not accomplishing what we need to accomplish in this area. Well, how are we going to do what we need to do in this area? We need to all get together. And the only way we are going to get together is to get together in one church. Now, it is not arrogant and it is not braggadocious of me to suggest that we get together in the church of Christ. That's the one you read about in the New Testament. Why is it that we can't go back to the New Testament and all conform to that doctrine and end up being just Christians in the church of Christ? And I'll tell you this, friends, if we will do that, we will never see a day where the homosexual community outnumbers Christianity. The reason why homosexuality outnumbered Christianity is because Christianity doesn't have a banner under which they can stand united. They're all divided up into all these different religions, and you saw this weekend the result of it all. A city that is divided against itself cannot stand. Now, I, we introduced to you one of the Baptist preachers who was actually taught by Arthur Pink, one of the persons that they upheld as a great man. This man learned from Arthur Pink, then he studied the Bible for himself, and he found out that, in fact, we did not inherit Adam's sin, that, in fact, God does not have to operate on you in order to, to save you, and, in fact, you can be lost. This arrogant doctrine of, I didn't do it, Adam did it to me. I can't get out from under it, God's got to operate on me. And once I do get out from under it, I can't sin, I can't be lost, I can't go to hell. It's as close to Jehovah's Witness doctrine as anything I've ever heard. Basically, Jehovah's Witness say there is no hell, the Baptists say you can't get into it. We're offering you an alternative. The alternative is this, when the people in Acts chapter 2 verse 37 ask the question, men and brethren, what must we do? The, the inspired writer said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The people that I just discussed with didn't even know where the conversion story of the Ephesians was. We had to show it to them. They've been re reading the Ephesians mail, and they didn't even know that, as they were saying, the Ephesians had never done anything, that they, in fact, were baptized twice. As a matter of fact, Every conversion account in the book of Acts ends with someone being baptized. How is it that the whole denominational world says it's not important? I'll give you the reason. They don't read the conversion of these individuals. And friends, if you want to know how to call on the name of the Lord, in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, the Bible says that the apostle Peter told those persons, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was Acts 2, 21. Just a few short verses later, after he preached to them who the Lord was, then these people in Acts 2, 36 heard him sum up and say, 
Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that the same Jesus that you have crucified, God has made him both Lord and Christ. And the Bible says they were pricked in their hearts and they said, men and brethren, what must we do? You notice he didn't tell them to pray the sinner's prayer. He didn't tell them to pray anything. He said, repent, you can. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And he finished that with Acts 2.40, which says, with many other words, he exhorted them saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. The Bible says in Acts 2.41, they that gladly received his word, they didn't have to wait on the Holy Spirit. They gladly received His Word, were baptized, and the Lord added, they were added unto them 3,000 souls that day. What were they added to? Acts 2.47 says they were added to the church. Friends, we appreciate you for being with us. That basically ends our discussion. We want you to know also that uh, if you want to uh, uh, be involved with us, we're going to be meeting uh, on Sunday morning at uh, 10 o'clock for the first time in Danville. We actually close on our property this uh, past week. We'll be meeting at 120 American Legion. That's behind the old Dutch shopping center on North Main. If you're familiar with the uh, Roman Eagle Nursing Home, then you know right about where we are. It's a large white building, 120 American Legion. And uh, you'll be our welcome guest.